Hi, it's Robin. Today I've been reading this issue of The Transactor, Volume 5, Issue 1, with a focus on sound and graphics. I think it's from 1984. has quite a few interesting articles here. Breaking the sprite barrier, sprite rotation, projectile plotting, more screen blitzes, VIC-20 sound effects, the fundamentals of music, voice interface for the CBM, Plus, a first look at the new Commodore 264. Always great artwork on these. Bunch of angels proclaiming the Commodore 64, I think. I don't know. Anyway, there's tons of interesting stuff in this issue. But here on page 21 is the one-line pet emulator. Need to run some pet software on your Commodore 64? Try these pokes, courtesy of Jim Butterfield. I thought, this is so cool. A one-line pet emulator. We'll give it a try and then figure out how it works. Hardly need my holder for this, but anyway, I had it out. So here we go, poke 56576,5. I believe that points the VIC at a different memory bank. The VIC can only see 16K at once, so you can configure it to look at any of the four banks of 16K of RAM. Poke 53272,4. That would point video memory to a different area. Poke 648, 128. That would point the basic screen editor at a different part of memory. Actually, that, that one's obvious at 8000 hex or 32768, which I happen to know is where pet screen memory is. Poke 1024, 0. On the C64, that's screen memory, but on the pet, that's the beginning of basic memory. And I think we've discussed recently how there needs to be a zero at the beginning of basic memory for the basic interpreter to work properly. There needs to be a zero there, and then the first line of basic follows right after. Poke 44, 4. Okay, I think that's the start of basic memory. Okay, take a look at mapping just to be sure. Yep, that's the pointer to the start of basic program text. Normally that's an 8 to point to 0801 or 0800 hex on Commodore 64. I guess we're already figuring out how mo mostly how this works, aren't we? <laughs> so anyway, it starts the, that changes the start of basic memory. Then poke 56, 128. So that should be the end of basic memory. And that's a pointer to the highest address used by basic. And on the pet, there's up to 32k of RAM, and it ends right at 8,000 hex right before video memory starts. So this is saying the C64 to cap basic RAM right below video memory at 32768.8000 hex. And then just clear the screen. Interesting that in the magazine it uses lowercase. Guess I could switch to that there. <laughs> And finally, a new. And the new serves two purposes. First of all, once you've run this program, it's obviously just configuring the C64, but isn't actively running anymore. So that just gets it out of memory, ready to load a pet program. And also, after you change these basic pointers around, like here at the, at the, the start and end of basic memory, you need to do either a new or a clear CLR just to clean things up afterwards. So that's the program. I gave the commentary, did I give away too much? <laughs> Let's try running it and see if it works. Okay, it says it's ready. So I've got some pet programs on the disk here. Let's give it a try. Now I think my super snapshot's still active, so I'll do a disk directory. Here we go. Whoa! Well, it was working, and then the screen filled up with garbage. Let's try that again. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so actually, <laughs> hey, look at this. Super snapshot by LMS Tech. Use the cursor keys to select feature, wedge, load, save, set up for new disk directory. So this is interesting. Obviously, some super snapshot memory is getting copied onto the screen here. So while the beginning of the directory is listing, this is executing some super snapshot code, but then when the screen scrolls, the garbage appears, 
So that makes me think that this wedge directory. So I guess the scroll code assumes that screen memory is at the regular C64 default and doesn't take into account if you've rearranged screen memory. Even though C64 seems normal right now, actually it's video memory instead of being at the regular location is up at 8,000. Basic is being switched around. So really the C64 is configured very much like a pet currently. And the fact that it can be done with just one line of code, I think indicates that the designers of the C64 very much had pet compatibility in mind. I don't think it's a coincidence that you can so easily configure a C64 to behave much like a pet. So I think if we do a slash dollar sign, that will instead load the directory into basic RAM. And then if we list that, there's the full directory without corruption. So that's interesting. So I've got several pet games here. Let's see if any of them work. We'll load up my favorite dungeon. So it seems to be there. Let's give it a try. Run. Oh, switch back to uppercase. Here we go. Cursor number 15, Dungeon. Copyright 79 by Brian Sawyer. Search for gold in the ancient ruins. Setting up. So far, so good. Just like on the pet, this takes a minute to set up, more or less literally a minute. So I'll fast forward this. Doom, 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 doom. Four, three, two, one. Yeah, hey. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we've got to move, but on the pet, you know, it has a number pad down here that is often used like a directional pad, a D-pad for pet games. Unfortunately, that's not available. So we'll have to use the number keys up here, which isn't as intuitive. By the way, people often suggest that the C64 by Retro Games should have a pet mode. And I point out that actually that wouldn't be all that fun. Part of the appeal of the C64 is that it has an accurate keyboard for C64 and VIC-20 modes, but the pet keyboard is so different that it's like you might as well be using an emulator. Yeah, in, in fact, it, it would just be not fun to play. So actually that's the same problem we'll have here today, but anyway, okay. So one should go down in uh, Southwest. Yeah, looks like it's working. Two to move down, three to move Southeast. Two to move south. Oh, there's a door. It's a hallway. So press uh, four should go west. It's all working. Haven't found any monsters yet. It's a big room. Three should move southeast. Oh, there. A spider with 17 points is near. Six to move on top of him. That's east. An attack. The spider is dead. Your hit points have been raised. This is working perfectly. You may move. Uh, eight to move north. Oh, there's a doorway. Gold is near. More gold. Seven should be northwest. Oh, a Gru with 80 points is near. I have 113. Nine to move northeast and attack. The Gru has 14 hit points. Well, I sure got a lot of attack. The Gru is dead. Your hit points have been raised. Actually, I'm doing really good. <laughs> you may move. Anyway, okay, we're not going to... We spent enough time on this game in the, those other episodes. And Q dies and reveals the dungeon. And of course, because it's... Uh, Basic two, that bug isn't there for the, uh, that we fixed in that previous episode. Do you want to play again? No, thank you. Ready. Well, I'm impressed. Okay. Let's, let's try another one or two here. Blackjack. Okay, we'll try that one. Run. Blackjack. Copyright night. Oh, shuffling. 
I think it said. Your bat. I don't know, 10. Bat. Oh, I got seven hearts, nine. Insurance. Uh, no. Do you want to hit? You have 16. No. Ace and five. Oh, dealer wins. Losing 10 bucks. Your bat, 100. Nine and seven. Do you want to hit against two? Oh, no, no, no. I got 16. No. Jack, 14. Busted. You win. Winning. So I'm plus 90. I wonder how big a bet I can do. Thousand bucks. <laughs> I have 18. Do you want to hit? No. 13. Busted. You win. Hey, I'm doing really good here. Your bet. Zero. No. Okay, and here, I'm just going to reset back to the C64. <laughs> now we're in C64 mode. Let's try loading that blackjack again. I'll load it again with the slash, which is the wedge shortcut for just loading comma eight, which loads into the beginning of C64 memory. So the C64 will load pet programs, basic pet programs into memory correctly. Okay, there's the program. Let's try running it. Blackjack, shuffling, your bet, 1,000. Oh, <laughs> this game works anyway. <laughs> but I know Dungeon doesn't. Do I hit? No. Okay, so I guess that wasn't that impressive. <laughs> okay, let's try another game. Everest. Okay, looks good. Run. Become a mountaineer. Okay, so the game seems to be frozen when I run it just on the C64 without running the emulator first. There should be a diamond down that bottom row. Okay. So I saved that pet emulator program. Run, load Everest. Okay, there it is. Run. Become a mountaineer. Press return to begin. Okay, there we go. Now the game's working. Okay, so we're that diamond down at the bottom of the screen in the middle. Avalanche. I press 9. Move up. And so the, the goal here is to climb up the mountain. You see how the there's the temperature. Okay, I got that strength meter. So if we climb up here... I think all those numbers, I'm moving seven to move uh, up and to the left. Seven, come on. There we go. So you have to pick your path. The number represents how much strength it costs to climb up that part of the screen or to that to the next tile. So you have to like conserve your strength. That was expensive, that was six. But here I can move to this three up above me. You see that diamond on the screen? <laughs> Sorry, this is hard to follow. Okay, uh, eight, move up again. Okay, move to that four. And uh, seven. Oh. Uh, it looks like I've been heading towards a very expensive part of the mountain. Uh, I guess I'll move. Oh, avalanche. Eight. Well, my strength is running very low here. Uh, four. Yeah, I'm I'm toast here. Strength zero. Out of energy. Your dad. Your climbing was good. Why, thank you, Brian. By the way, this is by Brian Sawyer, the author of Dungeon. He made a number of games back then. Do you want to try again? No. Okay, so we're actually having pretty good luck here. I know for a fact that games like Space Invaders won't work. Um, I'll try one more here. Star Force. Run. Oops, syntax error. Ooh. Okay, well, that one didn't work. Pet. 
emulator run. I'll try that Space Invaders. It's just a machine code program. We'll try running it. Oh, that's promising. How produce sound effects. I love this uh, Petsky diagram of how to wire up a speaker to your pet. It's got that diagram, your pet, and that one's the parallel port. A little arrow, audio amp, connect CB2 to your amp through 50 to 500k ohm resistor. I think Adrian's digital basement, I think he did this once. Or no, our uh, Jim Happel did. Yeah, I, I think it was my friend Jim Happel. Here we go. Let's see. Does it do anything? Ooh, score advanced table. Oh, something appeared up there and then... Yeah, I'll we'll try going to the snapshot. Oh, it's actually right frozen. So anyway, this program almost for sure has some pokes either to the CRT or actually more likely to the input output chips for timers or whatever. And this pet emulator cannot and does does not and cannot remap those uh those registers so full pet compatibility just really isn't possible but it's nice that it works with some of those games just to look a little bit more at how it works five six five seven six Okay, so poking 5 into 56576, five, six, bits 0 and 1, select the 16K VIC-2 memory bank, which, well, I don't know why they didn't bother to list them all, but anyway, 0, 1 is bank 2, 1, 1 binary is 3, that's bank 0, it's kind of like inverted, and then 1, 0 would be bank 1, and 0, 1 would be bank 2, and that's what this is. 5 in decimal is 1, 0, 1 binary. So zero one 1 means bank 2, and bank 2 starts at 8,000. That's where screen memory is on the PET. So we're telling the VIC to look to the range of memory from 8,000 to BFFF. That is 32768. Uh, I don't know about why it's why we're putting 5 in there. Bit 2 is the RS-232 data output, or pin M of the user port. I wonder what happens if you put a 1 in there. Does it still work? No? Uh, a error there. Oh! Okay, to edit this, I have to shrink that line. And put new, just barely over that 80 character limit that the basic editor has. So we have to actually abbreviate this line to change it. So now I'm going to change that to poke comma one and run that. Yeah, so I guess one works too. Yeah, and next is this poke 53272 four in hex. Of course, that's just zero four. So that means the upper nibble is a zero. That means the video matrix base address, the video matrix is going to be at zero, which you add to the base, 8,000. So yeah, screen memory is going to be at 8,000 hex or 32768 decimal. And the lower nibble sets the text character dot data base address and the reason it's being set to four is that's where the ROM character set lives. So if we set this to zero and ran it, oh, once again, I got to abbreviate this. If we run that, now our character set is also looking at screen memory, 8000. So that's why it's ugly. So we should be able to type it in blind, poke 53272,4, there. And now the VIC is fetching its character data, its font, its character set, 
from the regular ROM. Location 648 tells the basic screen editor where in video memory the VIC is looking right now. So it's nice that they added that configurability to it. And 128, you just multiply it by 256. That's just the page number where it starts. Multiply it by 256, and you get screen memory, 32768. Oh, 1024, yeah, that's the start of basic memory, just putting a zero there, which is necessary. If you don't do that, you'll get a syntax error when you try to do anything in basic, even if you try a list. Poke 44 is the high byte of the start of memory. So if we just take that 4 and multiply it by 256, then we get 1024, which is this same number by no coincidence. Notice that Butterfield doesn't bother to poke the low byte of it. It's already initialized to zero, so... And because he wants to make this a one-liner, there's no, no point in wasting the space on that. And poke 56, 128. Yeah, that's the top of basic memory. So 128 times 256. Yet again, is screen memory. Basic memory goes up to... It's non-inclusive, so it's actually one byte below that. And we already talked about that it just clears the screen and new. And here's a little challenge. I was wondering if we could make this even more like the pad. If I re-abbreviate these to save as much space as possible, oh, gotta get rid of that space. P shift O. So we can abbreviate all these pokes into P shift O. Just so we can squeeze as much as possible into the 80 character limit. And then the print can change into a question mark. And then new. Okay, so now we got a bit of space. What I'd like to do is also poke 53281, the background color, comma zero to black, just like the pet CRT has a black background. And after the screen clear, I'd like to insert control six, which is the green color. Now what I really like to do is also change the border color to black, but I could not figure out how to get that in. So that's a challenge. If any of you can figure that out, please let me know. I tried setting like a variable, like I tried saying A to 53272. Yeah, here, I'll do it. I'll do it in line two just so you can see. So if we take out 53272, and then here we insert A equals 53272, and then we can have a bit of a savings here, A plus nine. Hey, but you see, we only have three characters free. Uh, yeah, new doesn't have an abbreviation. N shift E is next, but that's still not enough characters. And every other poke here seems necessary to me. Well, there's two 128s here, but... Anyway, I, I fought with it for a little while and could not come up with a way of setting the border color as well within that 80 character limit. Yes, you could make a line through some tricks, but I want it to be a one-liner that you can actually just type in like a normal line of basic. So anyway, we'll delete line two. So here's our slightly improved pet emulator run. There, now we have green text on a black background with a terrible blue border. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to set that myself, even though that's cheating. Let's load up Yahtzee and run that. Yahtzee! Yay! How many to play? Well, just playing by myself. Oh, it'd be nice if Darren was here. We were just talking about Yahtzee on my podcast, Growing Up 80s with Darren Folds. And he was talking about computer Yahtzee. Do you want instructions? No. Initializing. There we go, Robin. What do I want to reject? One, two, and three. Yeah. Oh, now I got, I'll get rid of the six. Six, four, oh, well, that's 
pretty poor. We'll put that in category one. There, now we got two points in the ones. That's so much of a waste. Yahtzee's a pretty cool game. Kind of that. I like how it has some strategy. Oh, here, one, two, three. Um, I'll keep the five and get rid of the six in case I can get a straight here. Oh, now I got a pair. One more try to get a four. No, well, that's terrible. I'll just put that in my twos. One, two. Oh, okay, I got a four. Okay, I'll get rid of the five in case I can get the, let's see, one, once again. Woo! Well, we got a lot of mileage out of another one-liner. Very fun little program from Jim Butterfield that not only showed a bit of cleverness on his part, but also on how flexible the Commodore 64 really is. Thank you to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. was 10, I became obsessed with video games and the like. I dreamed of Donkey Kong, Pong, and then Space Invaders through the night. At school we had a Commodore pet.